Hey YouTube, it's Sharice here and I'm here to share my 23andMe results. So without further ado, let's get started. So I first want to talk about the process. Your kit comes to you in a box inside the sleeve and then it's wrapped in plastic so it comes to you nice and secure. It's also compact enough to fit inside of a mailbox or a um like I live in an apartment building, so they don't like it doesn't have to go to the office or be put in one of those bigger boxes. Oh, I just realized my computer is about to die. Hold on, let me grab my charger. I'm unorganized. Oh, my computer's about to die. I need to hook it up. BRB. Okay, so yeah, it comes to you in that box in the wrapped in plastic so it's nice and secure you know and then when you open it up it has all the materials that you need inside and if you live in the u.s um you've already paid for the postage to send it back i believe or did i have to put a stamp on this one either you have to put a stamp on it or you can just send it back so on the inside, they give you instructions. You can't eat or drink for 30 minutes before submitting your saliva sample. And then it comes with this little cool tube thing that has like a funnel. So you're not like trying to spit into a small cylinder, but you can, you know, you have some leeway because it just rolls on down in there. And you need to spit all the way up into the line. You don't want the bubbles at the line. You want the actual saliva to be at the line. So there may be some bubbles above the line. Then you close the funnel and there's like some solution there that mixes in with your saliva. And you screw it, you shake it up for a few seconds, and then you put it back in the bag. And in the bag is like a little piece of cloth or gauze, just in case, I guess, if it spills. You keep that in the bag, you seal it up, you put it back in the box, seal the box up, and you ship it back to them. So let me tell you the timeline for me. I ordered my kit. I got my kit, I think, within a week. I can't remember the exact dates for that. But the ordering and delivering, receiving it process goes by pretty quick. And then I did the sample, sent it back to them. They send you a confirmation email. And I got my confirmation email on July 2nd saying, hey, we received your kit. And then like with the pizza tracker, a lot of pizza companies like Papa John's, you can like track your pizza. It's like, we're cooking it. It's in the box. It's in the car being delivered, blah, 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 blah. They have a tracker so that you can see the status of your DNA processing. Like they send it to you. They've received it. Now it's in lab processing. Now they're analyzing DNA and then it's done like you get your results. And they send you emails for all of those different steps and you can check the status whenever you want to when you register your kit. So that's that. What else do I want to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, so mine was received by them on July 2nd. Today is the 22nd. So it took 20 days to go from through all of the extracting the DNA, processing the DNA, analyzing the DNA, and compiling my results. It only took 20 days. That's really, really fast. So we'll just say three weeks. When they say you need to wait, I believe, six to eight weeks. So I got mine really fast. Maybe because it's the summer and a lot of people aren't really doing it. But that is the process. Um... This specific test, the 23andMe, there's two different options. You can do just the ancestral ge gene gene genealogy type test just to learn about what your ethnic makeup is. Or you can do that part of it plus an additional like health portion of it that can tell you like if you're a carrier for any diseases or potential illnesses and, th and things like that. I didn't do the health part. Cause that's an additional $100 and this kit just the ancestral part hopefully that's the right word <laughs> runs for $99 after tax and everything I think it came up to like 108 and they give you a lot a lot of information I wish I could like show you my computer screen so you could see all the stuff that they tell you but I have it pulled up on my phone so I can kind of tell you what all you get for the $99 so the first thing they're going to tell you about is your ancestral composition. They're also going to be able to tell you about your, well, if you're a woman, wait, I don't know about for guys because I'm not a guy, but I'm a woman, obviously. So I was able to find out what my maternal 
haploid group is, my maternal haploid group. And if I want to know my paternal, my father's haploid group, I'd have to get him tested or a brother, which I don't have. So you have to get a male tested in your family to find out what your haploid group is for the paternal side. So I need to get my dad tested. Um, and I'm guessing that if you're a guy, you get to find out your paternal haploid group, but maybe not your maternal. I don't know. But anyways, I got my maternal haploid group. Um, then they also tell you your DNA family. They tell you how many DNA relatives you have. So how many people share X amount of identical DNA pieces or similar DNA thingies. I don't know the technical words, y'all. With you. And it says that I have 1,292 DNA relatives. And then it tells you about your Neanderthal. 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 Neanderthal ancestry. And it just says I have 24 Neanderthal. Why is that word so hard for me to say? Neanderthal variants. I'm not really quite sure exactly what that means. Um, and then you can like share and compare your results. And then you have the option to participate in some sort of research and like answer quizzes so that they can find out some things for research purposes. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And you'll find about find out about all that when you actually register for the kit. Um, my maternal haploid group is L, capital L, the number two, lowercase a, and then number one. And then it tells you what that means. Like it explains more, but I'm not going to go into that. What most people are most interested in is the ancestry composition. So I'm going to show you my phone. It looks so much better on a computer, but I'm going to kind of show you on my phone what you'll see. I'm not good at this stuff. I'm like trying to scroll. So scroll. And then that was all the stuff I was telling you about. You can see it says ancestry composition, maternal haploid, paternal haploid, your DNA, family, blah, 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 blah. And some more information. A lot of information. You can add your picture, da 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 da. So now I'm going to click on Ancestry Composition. From here, um, it says your genome tells the unique story of your ancestry, where your ancestors lived, where they contributed to your family tree, and how their DNA was passed down to you through your parents. For more information and about or for more information about your results, see frequently asked questions. Alright, so the first thing you're gonna see is your initials in a bubble, and then it's gonna be shaded, and then it's gonna have the world, and the world will be colored in the places where you have DNA from, and it'll be white in the places you don't have DNA. And I almost have the whole world. I got the whole world colored in. So you guys get to see that. You see, there's me. That big pink ring shows that I am basically 91% black, which no duh, I figured that was going to be the case. So you, you get to see the world. But then it breaks you down. It says Sharice 100%. So they have accounted for 100% of my DNA. Kind of. You'll find out why I say kind of. So the first thing is it goes into like broad categories. I'm going to tell you the broad category and then I'm going to bring it down into subcategories. So I'm going to tell you all of the broad categories first so this makes more sense mathematically. So I'm 91% Sub-Saharan African. Yay! I'm black, 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 black. I am grade A black on a 10 point grading scale. <laughs> I'm 8% European. wonder where that came from. I'm 0.6% East Asian and Native American. And then less than 1% Middle Eastern, North African. And then I have 0.4% that is unassigned, meaning 0.4% of my DNA didn't match up to nobody, at least to a certain degree. Like there's a certain percentage that has to match in order for it to count I guess and there's point four that they just couldn't find nobody else has in their database so the more people that do this test the better your results are going to be um so those are my broad categories that's the big picture so got a little middle eastern north african very little of that and then we have a very small amount of east asian native american 
And then we have 8% European, which is like almost a tenth white. Like, bruh. There's my dog. Nola! Nola! Sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, almost a tenth white, which kind of shocked me. But I'm glad it's that low, just because the reason it's in there probably it didn't happen by choice. We'll just put it that way. You know what I'm saying if you live in America, or you know anything about American history and why black people are even over here in America. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, so 8% European and then 91% Sub-Saharan African. So that's the big picture. Now we're going to break down each one of those broad categories into subcategories so of the 91 percent sub-saharan african i am 86 i'm 100 percent dog mom nola come here nola idea what my dog was barking at i gave her some treats she's being a good girl sit good nola all right um oh so of the 91 percent sub-saharan african broad picture it's broken into three different parts for me 86.6 percent of me is west african which if you know anything about history that makes total sense being that i am african-american so 86.6 percent west african that's my biggest percentage 2.4% Central and South African, and then 2% broadly Sub-Saharan African, which means that they couldn't really pinpoint just broadly Sub-Saharan African. Like I have, I share DNA with people Sub-Saharan Africa that can't be pinpointed to a Pacific, a Pacific specific reason, reason, region. Oh, Nola's licking my leg. Thank you for the kiss. Want more treats? Want some more treats? Yes, that's a good girl. Y'all, we've had so many distractions in this video already. Good girl. Okay. So, yeah, that's it for the Sub-Saharan African. Like I said, 86.6% West African. 2.4% uh, Central and South African. 2% broadly Sub-Saharan African. And that makes up the 91% of the Sub-Saharan African part of me. Moving on to the European section. Like I said, I'm 8% European. That's the big picture. Let's break that down. So, <clears throat> and this can be broken down even further. You'll see. I'll show you. So, 6.2% is Northwestern European, which is broken down into 2.5% British and Irish, 0.5% Scandinavian, and then 3.1% broadly Northwestern European. Then I have 0.8% Southern European and then 1% broadly European. They don't know where, they just know that the DNA matches up with European people or people of European descent. And I'm gonna show you how it breaks those two categories down so you can see what I'm talking about by the big picture and then little pictures and sometimes the little picture has subcategories underneath. So that's 99% um, of my DNA right there. 91 plus 8, 99%. So moving on, I have 0.6%, this is the big picture, 0.6% East Asian and Native American, which is broken down into 0.5% um, Southeast Asian, and then less than 1% broadly East Asian and Native American. Moving on to the next big picture, which is less than 1% Middle Eastern and North African, and I have less than 1% North African, or less than 
North African, and less than 0.1% broadly Middle Eastern North African. And then I have 0.4% of my DNA, which is completely unassigned. So they couldn't find anything to match it up with. And I'm just going to scroll through and just let you guys see that from the top slowly. So there's that world map we first talked about, how it's all lit. And the little slices in the circular pie chart with the hole in it. More like a donut chart. I'm going to call it a donut chart. And then just slowly scroll through all the different regions so you can see how it's all broken up. And they also give you more information than what I'm just showing you. This is kind of like the big picture. On the website and on my phone, I could click each of these regions and you can find out additional information. One thing I really like about 23andMe is that they give you a lot of information. A lot of information. And if you do the health part, which you can always add at a later date, I might add the health, you can find out even more information. If you're wondering why I'm bending down crazy, it's because I'm petting my dog. She's being a very good girl. Girl. So, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I pretty much expected all of these. Let me tell you the two things that kind of caught me off guard. Um, Scandinavian, that kind of caught, caught me off guard because, like, learning in school, I didn't hear anything about, like, the Scandinavians coming over to the Americas, you know? Like, you hear about British, the British coming to America and then, you know... I'm sure over there they were intermingling, mixing, so the Irish part. And my last name is Ishman, so a lot of people say that sounds Irish, or it's almost spelled like Irish. So British and Irish, I wasn't really too, like, what? But Scandinavian, I was like, that's interesting. And then uh, Southeast Asian, 0.5%. That was, like, interesting to me because... I mean, I don't really, you know, Southeast Asian. It's interesting. So those are the only two things that really did make sense to me. Everything else makes sense because it's all Africa. And then I, or British makes sense. British and Irish kind of make sense because, you know, history. So, yeah, those are my ancestry composition results. I did do a test with ancestry. DNA through Ancestry.com and I'll be sharing those results and we'll compare and contrast. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, and I'm also running my results through second party websites to find out additional information and I will talk about that in another video. This video is already long enough. I wanted to share that. I'm black and I'm proud. A lot of people ask, well, how do you feel now? I feel pretty much the same it's just interesting to see it like concretely and say hey like you're 91 percent black basically eight percent european and like less than one percent other random stuff it's just interesting to see that in writing i'm still black so <laughs> and proud of it so that's it for this video like i said i will be finding out even more information and i'll let you know what else i find out Ignore the fact that my foundation looks lighter than my body. I promise you in person it matches and it looks really good. But on camera, I don't know why it's looking strange. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will make another video answering a little bit more questions about which one I like better, 23andMe or Ancestor DNA. And I'll make another video about what to do with your DNA results. Like what else you can do with your DNA results after receiving them and how to use like your raw DNA and download that and apply it to some other places and things. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Facebook, you already know and saw all this. Shout out to all my friends, teachers, family members that may watch this video. I actually might put this one on um, Facebook. I usually don't share my YouTube videos on Facebook. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm talking a lot now. I'm rambling. It's the summer. I'm tired. I'm hot. It's hot. It's too hot. I'm gonna go now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Black Power. Bye.